So one of the biggest issues with the MakerBot Replicator 2X is the warped aluminum board. And Adam P on the MakerBot Operator Google Group actually figures something out. And uh, it, it's so simple. And it just makes so much sense. I've really had to try it because, well, quite, quite frankly, I'm disappointed in myself that I didn't come up with it first. Just kidding, Adam. Great job. Um, so I actually have a replicator too, but this is left over from the 2X that uh, I don't use. I actually have a Bottle Works glass heat bed plate on order, uh, but it's going to take a little bit to get to me, and I have to print off some ABS parts. So we're going to take this one and put it on my replicator too. Uh, keep in mind, if you do this, you need to get the upgraded power supply. Uh, Google for what I mean in, in regards to that. If you don't know, your Replicator 2 comes with a 6.25 amp, 150 watt power supply. You need at least a 9.6 amp, 220 watt power supply to actually power the heat bed plate or you will blow your stock power supply. So in doing this, uh, it was actually fairly simple, really. I mean, he mentions, what does he say here? He mentions that he actually used a 0 .150 inch or a number 24 drill bit. Closest thing I could get is 0 .155 inch, which was actually a 532nd drill bit. It looks to be about two sizes larger than the current hole here, which times by four on the diameter for all four screws should give plenty of room for the steel plate to shift as the aluminum plate expands faster than the steel plate would when the heat is applied, which it's the binding from the steel plate that's actually causing the aluminum to warp more, which actually makes sense. I actually did notice one time that my screws were practically just hand tightened and my board was actually better. What I didn't think about was drilling it out two sizes larger and putting some washers underneath it with some blue Loctite to hold it in place so that the bolts don't actually fall out or screws don't fall out during the vibration of printing. It was a great idea. Uh, so I got several different size washers here because it's late at night and my local hardware stores are closed. Uh, one of them just barely fits over the screw itself. Not too much bigger in diameter at all. Actually, you can't even really notice how much bigger it is. And the other one works just as well. I tested all, all different kinds. We have one that's actually much larger than the bolt itself, and that works fine too. There's no problem with that either. The whole key is as long as you have a little bit of shift here, you should be able to hold this aluminum plate still and have that shift. That's what you're looking for. And not just top, top to bottom, but you want to have that left to right as well. Which is kind of hard to do on camera. There you go. So, the key thing is the blue Loctite. Make sure you use the blue Loctite, otherwise these bolts will probably vibrate out on you. I'm just basically going to hand tighten them with a washer underneath and still allow that little bit of a shift to be there and give it a try and see how it goes. I actually, like I said, it, it makes so much sense that I, I don't foresee any issues with this at all, to tell you the um, The one thing I will note though, you're putting a washer underneath the bolt to allow it to have that little bit of a shift with the extra diameter in the hole that you just drilled out the steel plate. So you will have metal shards specifically where you did the drilling and you can see here I actually filed it down and the reason for filing it down I filed it down on both sides because you don't want the metal plate the shards to get caught on the aluminum and stop it from doing its shifting it, it basically binding and binding the aluminum plate up again during the heat expansion and at the same time you don't want the washer to get caught on the shards on this side either so I did take a couple of fine files that I have around basically from removing supports off of off of uh, the parts I print on the replicator but and just carefully filed down both sides and made sure that there was no sharp edges when I rub my finger and it feels nice and smooth when you rub your finger over that hole that's what you should have 
on both sides. That will give you the best flexibility for this aluminum plate to shift and do this basically. And that's what's exactly what you want. So little blue Loctite washers that are slightly bigger than the hole that you drilled yet still fit the diameter of the screw and a number 25 or I'm sorry number 24 drill bit or a 532nd or a 0 0.150 inch uh, either way you're looking to go about two sizes up from the stock hole that's already here and go ahead and throw your heat bed you play it back on your Replicator 2X or your Replicator if you have the updated power supply. And at the same time, be sure to don't forget to, you know, relevel your board again. And turn it down far enough when you install it that you don't ram your print head into it when you turn it on to the leveling script. So, Adam, again, thank you. It was a great idea. And I look forward to using this and getting some of my ABS parts off until I get the Bottle Works heat bed plate delivered to me. Thanks.